today we're taking our first run in the Hoka One One Carbon X. So we've just taken our first run in the Carbon X. Nothing too slow, nothing too fast, just a good tempo pace. Just wanted to see how this shoe felt underneath the whole foot. So that midsole they are using, very plush underneath the whole foot, coupled with that carbon plate, so it keeps you quite stable. I felt like you had a lot of ground contact, but it was quite soft ground contact. A lot of cushioning underneath that whole foot. The upper locks down very well, fit very true to size, nice round toe box, but just still hugging the foot. The laces, probably could one of those things they could have improved on. One of the laces ended up untying. They just don't have a whole lot of give to them, very stiff lacing. They're probably trying to take a bit of weight out of the lacing, but I think they could just, yeah, use a bit of a easier lace to tie up something that grips a bit better. But I have been wanting to run in this shoe for quite a long time now, so it's been out in Australia for probably about five months. Uh, we're just coming in at that 280 price point. It's just, yeah, quite steep. So I just had to wait that bit longer to get my hands on it. Could be that good race day shoe. We're still having a lot of cushioning underneath the foot. Instead of wearing those kind of lightweight trainers, uh, this is still quite lightweight. The shoe is coming in at 246 grams. Not really a lightweight compared to some other shoes coming in around that 210 mark. It's just a lot of, lot of stack height underneath that foot. So you're running with that five mil drop, pretty sure it's a 32 to 27. Still a lot of cushioning underneath that foot. So if you're wanting that race day shoe that's still quite plush, but it has a lot of energy return. Some like the Carbon X would work great. Great overall fit with the upper, so single layered mesh, so it's very breathable, uh, but it still does lock in quite nicely. Just a good standard width at the forefoot. It's not too narrow, not too wide for myself. Gusted the tongue, so you're not getting that tongue slippage to that one side. And it is coupled with that lace loop, so there's basically no irritation of that moving anywhere. Moving on to the heel, locks it in quite well, even though it doesn't have that uh, any nylon heel on it so there's no heel counter just got a lot of that stitching around that heel so coupled with that last lace loop that just does bring it all in and hugs the foot quite well pull tag so if you are using these for triathlon that kind of half and full iron man easy to slip on open it straight up fitted my foot like a glove probably keep these for kind of that taper week so leading into the events plus the event itself goes up quite well against the next percent at the moment so they're kind of the only two carbon shoes that are kind of any good, uh, but durability wise, you're gonna get quite a lot longer out of the Carbon X than the next percent. So you should probably look at that 500, 600 Ks, just with the outsole they are using, whereas the next percent, you'd probably look at that kind of three to 400 Ks. This is that slightly bit cheaper than the next percent, so your next percent falls into that 320, this comes in at 280. I think Hoka have done a really good job for their first iteration of a carbon plated. Well, they have done your Evo Rocket. This is more of that kind of high mileage shoe, whereas that Evo Rocket is your five to 10K, anything kind of half marathon and those, your calves will just be burning with that, only that one mil drop. Whereas this is, yeah, made for those half Ironman, full Ironmans, or just those marathon, half marathon events. So what's actually running underneath your foot in your Carbon X? Your first layer of cushioning is that Profly X, so it's that lightweight cushioning, just the initial cushioning on the landing, plus it does have that good energy return coupled with that carbon plate underneath it. I'm pretty sure they're using something similar to that Armat, so in the past Hoka and Ono have been using that Armat for an outsole, so instead of having that rubber that adds weight to a shoe, they have used Armat in the past, but I'm pretty sure this is something similar to that. So it's still a durable plus having that added cushioning to the outsole. It does go in quite nicely with the whole package. So you got that Profly carbon plate, then something similar to that, that armor. So probably coming into the new version of this, I think Hoko could probably change just the stack height, take it down by three, probably four mil. Just have a bit less underneath the shoe. Obviously reduces the weight. I think for a race day shoe, it's quite a lot of cushioning. Obviously it's gonna be forgiving, especially coming into the back half of your race. When your legs are getting tired, you do end up wanting a bit more cushioning. Taking out that kind of three, four mil of cushioning could make this shoe yeah, light up, go up well against its competitors, but it does kind of have that all in all race day packaging. So if you have been happy training in a Clifton or a Bondi and just want something for race day that's still got that similar 
hope you're cushioning. Something like your Carbon X would work great for you. Coming off the bike, uh, this does give a bit more forgiveness to the calves and hamstrings. The shoe ends up doing a bit more work for the body, especially if you're not kind of a sub three marathon runner, just that kind of mid pack. If you want to get your hands on a pair of these, I'm pretty sure Hoka are fully stocked now after their first initial release, which was quite limited. Uh, they do have quite a few more colorways now. We ended up going with that blue, white, and orange. Actually a half decent looking shoe on the foot as well. Bit easier to keep clean than that full white. If you want to end up getting on that carbon plate train, some of these by Hoka, definitely hit that spot. Carbon in it, I found was a bit more of a stability, so you had a lot of ground contact uh, with that Pro Fly. Decent propulsion and just ended up wanting to make you run faster and get that, get that cadence ticking up. If you've got any questions about the shoe, hit us up in the comments. Cheers for letting us hit 200 subs. Let's keep pushing that to a K. Uh, if you want to join our Strava Club, we'll have a link in the description as well. It's Beyond the Feet. And if you want to keep updated with a few behind the scenes stuff, head over to Insta. We'll have that in the description as well. But yeah, we'll see you in another video. Bye. Try redo that. Okay. Today we've taken our first run in the Hoka One Hoka One One, fuck it. Nah. Huh? Go Oneo One. 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 Oneo. Oneo. Today we've taken our first run in the Hoka One Hoka One Carbon X.